Good morning. Good morning, everybody. I'm excited to be here today. We got a lot to cover. And I want to say to you, don't forget to go to the description box. And if you don't have your juicer yet or you want to order a juicer for somebody, make sure you go to that description box and order your juicer. And if not, one of the things I want to tell you is just slice your fruits and vegetables up in a nice salad. Make you a lime olive oil dressing. It's really, really good. Okay. So moving forward this morning, because I'm excited about the juice we're going to make. Um, it's one that I created because I was just talking to my dad. You know, my dad is father God. And I was like, what can I do with these raspberries? These powerful, potent, little red things that are so delicious, that has such they taste like perfume in the mouth to me. I, I had one um, while I was prepping today. And I wanna say to you all, thank you for all the support, all the love, all the feedback I'm getting. I'm getting so many comments um, concerning, and good ones, very positive ones. The negative ones, I understand, because everybody is not um, in the place that I was in with my life. But I tell y'all what, Scripture came to me today and a song I woke up with. And I'm telling y'all, I don't normally sing on the show, but most of my friends know, again, I'm a ham and I like to sing. But I'm going to do these two things for us first. I want us to prosper, live a long time, and be in health. And that's the scripture that God gave me this morning when I was praying for us, not just myself, but I was praying for the people that I know people that are hurting, people that are not well, um, those of us who are struggling with something, and the majority of us have abused our body. And I know on yesterday's session when I said, the body said, I'm going to pay you back. But it's the truth. Our bodies do pay us back. And we try to tell the doctor and tell ourselves it's some alien force that's come from somewhere that's done this to us. Even with genetics, genetic, genetic things come through what our parents ate and what their parents ate. And um, they're just habits that we have that were inherited. And that's the genetic part of sickness. My mom, she cooked pretty healthy, I think. Uh, my, my one sister that this week of shows is dedicated to and even everybody out there that knows somebody with diabetes or you are dealing with diabetes. I, I'm still doing research because I want to learn about that. But my mom, we, we ate pretty good. But one of the things that we did have every Friday was starches. We had rice from the Chinese restaurant. And it was fun because she would buy a, a box of each type, like mine was always shrimp fried rice. She loved ribs and rice. One sister loved um, uh, yak, you know, and that's something I call it from the hood, you know, in, in downtown where we where I'm from. And um, <laughs> we would we would just enjoy ourselves, not knowing that the starch in that was affecting my sister Darlin. All of us didn't have issues with our pancreas, but my sister Darlin did, and so. It, it really um, affected her. Didn't know why she was, at that time, after she ate, she was strange or she was uncomfortable, but she couldn't identify what was going on in her body because she was always withdrawn to herself. But if you pushed her, but not, we didn't know that, that she was even then struggling within herself. I remember in our house, we had a, what we called a pantry. I thought it was a closet, um, but it was just just nice size room. It could have been a laundry room, but it was just nice size room where we kept our bicycles inside. And it was pretty cool. And you could go in there and play or whatever. Um, but Darlin said, well, times that we would talk, that she would go in there and eat sugar sandwiches. So she would get the white bread, loaf bread, remember? Um, and she would sprinkle sugar on it and then eat it. And could that have been her body raising her sugar level? You know, I don't know. I really, guys, don't know. But I want to say to you that the information that I'm giving 
I'm hoping that it will help someone to understand that you take control. You take control of your health. Um, the scripture, and I don't know which I should do first. I'm, I'm going to sing. I'm going to give you all the words to the song. It's by Curtis Mayfield. I am. I grew up. I was born in 1957. I'm the youngest of five sisters. And one of the things that my mom did in our house, we played lots and lots of music and all kinds of music. And um, even Charlie Pride, I was going to say No Country Western, but Charlie Pride, we, we played him as well. But I remember when this movie came out, my number one sister, Dee Dee, loved, she loved this movie. And there was one particular scene that she loved, but we all got the soundtrack because we love music so much. And one of the songs, it was um, Superfly. And one of the songs in that soundtrack was, um, I don't remember the title of the song, but the words, that's what was in my head this morning. So glad I got my own. So glad that I can see. My life's a natural high. The man can't put nothing on me. Show is funky. Show is funky. Cause I ain't no junkie. I ain't no junkie. See, the whole premise of the movie was that it was about the drug activity in the black community. And I want to say, have we gone from street drugs to prescribed drugs? Are we doing that? Show is funky. I ain't no junkie, not even to prescription drugs. But I am a junkie to God's presence. And I am a junkie to learning how to be better. The scripture that God gave me today was, let me stop right there. And I want you to be a Jesus junkie too. I want you to love him so much that you spend time with him. I want you to understand that he loves you so much that not only is he wanting you to juice and take care of your body, but I am a vessel that he can use. And I'm grateful to extend him to you. That's all I'm doing. I'm extending what I've learned about him in a way that I can give it to you. I beg you, take care of your health. This scripture that he gave me today, and I'm going to read it in several versions because that's what he told me to do. So this scripture is, I think it's 1 John 1, 3, I think. It may be 2 John 1, 3 or 1 John 1, 3. I don't have the scripture written down. I just have it printed out the different versions of it. Please forgive me for that. I know you will. So it says, the new end of the NIV version says, dear friend, this is what God is saying to us today. This is what the scripture that he told me to give today. He said, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. See, when we, we, we can, we can say that we've, we've, um, mastered a particular thing. But in mastering a particular thing, I remember when a friend of mine and I, we would meet at church three times a week and we, because we knew we weren't where we were supposed to be in God. And so I had the keys to the church because I decorated and I was um, over a department there. And so we, I got permission from the pastor and we would go in and we would pray. And then other women would join us. Sometimes we would have a lot of women. Sometimes it would just be three of us or just the two of us, but we had purpose in our heart that we wanted more of God. We didn't want to be the same next year like we was that, that year. And so purpose in your heart that you don't want to be the same next year physically in your health, because this scripture says that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. You know what I found in my immediate circle of people? When people have succeeded in finance, somewhere the enemy tricks them in their mind that everything else is good. Everything else is good. That's a lie. The word says that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. The New Living Translation says, dear friend, I hope all is well with you and that you are as healthy in body as you are strong in spirit. The English Standard Version says, Beloved, I pray that all may go well with you and that you may be in good health as it goes well with your soul. Your soul, your mind, your will, your emotions, your intellect. That's your soul. 
That's where God speaks to you in that place. It comes out of your spirit. But in order for him to get that translation from heaven, he puts it in your spirit first. And then your spirit, if you're feeding your spirit, man, the word of God, then the translation begins to come up here. But he's saying, listen, you're triune. I want your spirit to prosper. I want your soul to prosper. But I definitely want your health and your body to prosper. We ain't no junkies. We ain't no junkies. Except for the word of God and except for his presence. The Berean Bible, and I love this one, it says, Beloved, I pray you to prosper concerning all things and to be in good health, just as your soul prospers. Then there's the Berean Standard Version. Beloved, I pray that in every way you may prosper and enjoy good health, as your soul also prospers. How, how is it that we can think that we have arrived because we have a nice bank account or we live well, but our health is jacked up? We, we, we are so busy pursuing stuff, but we abuse our body with drugs and alcohol. How, how can that be so? With food, we abuse our bodies with food. Even myself, God put me in check today because I like fried fish. So when I came off the fast on yesterday, I was craving some fried catfish from this store in our area. And I got some. So for two days after the fast was over, I, I had some fish, some fried fish. Now I'm saying, not saying to y'all what you cannot eat, but what I am saying to you is you have to put proper nutrients in with your with your juices and your fruit juices and your vegetable juices. You can have the things that you like mm, within moderation, but you have to be careful even with that. That's addictive. For me, God had to stop me. See, that's why I get in his presence in the morning so that he can tell me, uh, 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 I, I do it this way. Eh, 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 because you're in trouble. You, your behavior is starting to become a pattern here. And he told me today, he said, you can have a salad and tuna that if you're craving fish, but you cannot, you cannot, when you come off of this fast, abuse your body every day, eating the same thing. Remember on another episode, I told you all that I do have an addictive nature. And so I go in God's presence so that he can, he can um, modify that and he can change it to whatever he wants. I'm going to read just a few more. My favorite um, version of the Bible is this, the King James Bible. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. Now, I'm going to tell y'all, I knew when I read it that way, some of y'all quoted it with me. I'm going to pause right there for a moment of silence. How dare we know how to quote a scripture, but we don't apply the scripture. We're doing ourselves a disservice. We're doing our family a disservice. That we can quote the Bible. We can do all the religious stuff. We can go to the house of God and worship him. But still, we can't show our families that the power of God up on us. When he comes up on us, he undertakes for us. And then he shows us how to discipline ourselves. Even if we ask him, Father, please help me. Please help me here. Please help me here. So that, um, that's the last one. Okay. The new King James Version. All right, Daddy. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things. He don't mind you prospering. Get that. He don't want us to be broke financially, but he don't want us to be in a deficit in our health. I want you to prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. That's a triple threat right there. Spirit, soul, body. I want you to prosper. I want you to be rich on all points, in all things. Um, I am going to give us the, the uh, benefits of the, the fruits that we're going to juice today. But I do want to say this. I have some friends that are very ill, very, very ill. And I was introduced to them um, by a relative who said, my cousin in her relationship with God, beat cancer. And I want to give you her number and see if you can help her. And I want to say to anybody that's out there that you have a disease that's debilitating, that's ha that have you con confined, 
Don't allow the enemy to use that sickness to confine you to the point that you just sit around and do absolutely nothing because you're afraid to move. If I go out, um, COVID is out there. If I do this, I told you all on one of those episodes, listen, you, this is your first line of defense. You control it. Put the nutrients in your body. I'm, I'm finding that there are some diseases and, and to me, this is a trick of the enemy that you can't eat the fruits and vegetables that God has there for you to um, bring nutrients to your body. Then do research on the beans and the nuts and the lentils. What about more water in your system? I, I, I had to remind myself because during a fast, you forget. You're so focused on, Lord, keep me in this fast. Help me in this fast. And, and you forget to drink water. Nope, you need water. We have to have water. We are 90% water. So we have to have water. We're, we're like any other plant. If you don't water it, it will dry up. It will dry up and then die. Because I have several plants here that's doing that because I don't know how, I don't know how much water to give them. I don't know how much sunlight to give them. But there's a balance. And that's why we come in God's presence. There's a balance. So I'm asking those of you who are confined or have confined yourself, or have isolated yourself from going out, sitting in the sunshine. It could be that you just need to go and sit in the sun, the sun, the sunlight, and get those vitamin D rays naturally. And let me give you a tip. When you sit in the sun, don't bathe for an hour. Hmm. Because you're allowing the vitamin D to absorb through the skin into your cells. There's, there's a lot of good information out there, y'all, but I learned all of this in my journey, in my journey with cancer. And on my journey, I had to leave it. It could not continue on in my life with me. At some point, I had to cut it off and part ways with it. And I love how God um, downloads to me and speaks to me as I'm speaking to you all. This is how that happened. Certain things can't go with you the rest of your journey. Obesity can't go with you the rest of your journey. Diabetes can't go with you the rest of your journey. Any sickness and disease, it cannot go with you the rest of your journey. God has great things for you. He has good things for you. And so he wants you to fulfill your purpose and your destiny that he ordained. Who would have thought that two years ago, I would actually be in my new kitchen that I asked God for? Because I told him, I said, I hear what you're saying. You want me to do these juice shows, but I'm ashamed of where I live. Yeah, I said it. And that shame, I took a, a Zyto test. And in that test, it showed that my body was carrying shame. There are tests that, that you can take to find out exactly what's going on with you. It showed that I had too much metal in my system. Well, I was wearing every day um, a brass ring. It, it showed so many things in that test. And there's a lady, and I may find her and ask her, can she um, set up appointments where people can get those tests? Or ask your doctor where they do that test on you. Z-Y-T-O, that's what that test is called. I don't know who does it in your area. I just know this lady, and I had the test done. And I was glad I did, but I understood where the shame was coming from. I knew exactly where it was coming from. I couldn't say it to anybody else. But look at what God did because he wanted me to do this. Now I'm in my new kitchen. I am so grateful to him for what he's done. And I want to say to you all, ask him. He said, ask him. He said, anything you ask in my name, I will do it. If you're mature enough to understand what you're asking for and can you handle it. He says, I'm an unlimited resource. That's what he told me today when I was with him. That was the first thing. When I walked through my bedrooms in my upper part where my prayer room is, and I always walk and talk to him. He said, I'm an, I'm an unlimited resource. I am all powerful. He said, anything you want, I made it. He said, no matter where it is, I can get it to you. Are you understanding? So if there are things that we want that he can get to us, certainly his power can come upon us to help us to be better, to help us, to give us the discipline and the focus that we need to be all that he intended. I love you guys. And I'm just sharing out of my heart what God talks to me about. I'm talking to you the way God talks to me. If, if my tone is not um, what you're accustomed to, please forgive me for that. But it's just 
who I am. It's my tone. I, I don't know how to change that. I don't, I, I don't. God didn't ask me to change that. I think some of my family members want me to. You're too uh, abusive in your tone. No, I'm not. I'm not. I think that we need somebody in our face to tell us. So glad I got my own. So glad that I can see. My life's a natural high. The man can't put nothing on me. Not chemo, not drugs, not alcohol. The man can't do it. But when God puts it on me, when he puts perfect peace on me, when he puts joy on me, he's saying, I want that for all of my children. Oh, I got to go. So um, I told you all that I would give you several things. And um, we know that there are six basic nutrients needed by our bodies. I'm going to push that for this week. It is protein, carbohydrates, fats, vitamins, minerals, and lastly but not least, water. Now, guys, let me say something to you all. Yesterday, when I did the, um, I think it was yesterday, one of those days, oh, day before yesterday, I did the, the sweet potato peach juice, right? So I noticed that as I allowed that juice to sit in my refrigerator before I took it to work, that there was this thick white stuff that just stuck to the bottom of the glass. And I would shake it up to try to get it off. And, and, and I heard the Lord said, that's all starch. Let it settle. You don't have to put that in your body. And I was like, whoa, whoa. So the starch in the juice just settles down. Isn't that wonderful for any person that's diabetic that just wanted to try the juice? Let it sit in your refrigerator. Let it settle. And all I could cry, I could just cry about that because all the starches settle at the bottom. And then you don't even have to shake it up. Pour that off into another vessel. I'm not even going to touch that. Father, I'm going to leave that alone. Pour that off into another vessel and then drink that. Mmm. Mmm. Woo! I'm excited. So listen. Listen. You got your five nutrients that you got to have. So then circulation for diabetics. We talked about cayenne pepper. We talked about beets. So now the next one is fatty fish. Ooh, go figure. Eat your mackerel and your tuna and your salmon. Listen, if you've always wondered why fish is good for your heart, here's one reason. Fatty fish like salmon, mackerel, trout, herring, and halibut are full of omega-3 fatty acids. Studies suggest that these compounds are good for your circulation. Eating fish not only lowers your resting blood pressure, it can help keep your arteries clear and unclogged too. Clear arteries, circulation. That means that diabetes don't have nothing on you. Can't put nothing on you. Yes, you may be taking insulin. I don't know. But I'm telling you, there are things and ways that you can protect yourself. You can build yourself up. Love yourself. Love yourself. Love yourself. Let's move on, guys. Um, this one here, I'm going to just go through it. Can you reverse type 2 diabetes? This is a good question. Although there's no cure, so they say Jesus is the cure. See, there's no cure known to man. But what if one of us would sit with God during our fast and ask him, can you give me the cure for diabetes? I asked God, I said, there, there are no products in the makeup department at the department stores that if I put it on my skin, it opens my pores. So he said, then do research on the oils that can go on your skin. So I don't buy products from the store, um, over the counter products, I should say, in the beauty supply section. That's a trillion dollar industry as well. I make my own oil for my face. I told y'all that the other day. I put, I put vitamin E for my eyes for the wrinkles but I have like eight different oils that I mix together once a month and put on my skin. So who is to say, for those of you who are sitting at home and allowing the enemy to back you in a corner because you're dealing with something, what about while you're dealing with that, you get it before God and say, God, download to me how this can be beat. Give me the cure. He did it for George Washington Carver. That man had over two 100 products from one peanut? Oh my goodness. 
So why wouldn't God do it for us? We're not exempt. We just don't ask. And we don't think that we are, we are, um, let's see, we are worthy to receive the glory of that kind of information. He made us worthy. He made us worthy. Don't ever let anybody tell you you're not worthy to receive what God has for you. You are most definitely worthy. You're the number one candidate of his worthiness, of his royalness, of his holiness, of his grace. You're the number one candidate. Mm, I got to back up, y'all. I didn't know that these sessions would go this way, but I'm okay with it because I'm going to do what God told me to do. You know, um, a lot of people will say, but you shouldn't talk about God. Well, that's my life. He saved my life. Why would I not give him glory? Why would I not give him praise? He delivered me from a disease that I've seen a lot of people die from, a lot of people. And I could not help them because they did not believe what I told them because they weren't in my journey with me. But I am bringing you into my journey and this is what I did to beat, to kill off cancer cells in my body. But I cannot stop. I have to continue on. Mm. Going back to type 2 diabetes, studies show it's possible for some people to reverse it. You see the wording in reports. They have to be careful how they word it because they don't want to be sued. I get it. I understand. But when I see that it is possible that it can be reversed, then you better believe that I'm going to go to my doctor if I had it, if I'm speaking for you, and, and take get the report. Look up, can you reverse type 2 diabetes? We do research. On, I've seen people on their computer for hours looking for a purse or looking for a particular outfit, a, a particular color of shoes, a particular food. Even a man. People are on. Oh, my God. I, uh, people are even searching for a mate. So you can't search for your health. You can't search for the thing that's going to help you to be better. We spend hours watching a movie or binge watching a series on 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 TV. What in the world are we doing? Because we think that it's just going to fall on us? No. Get up and get engaged in life. You only get one chance at this. You only get one shot at this. Somebody asked me, and, I, and I'm going to put this out there. Because in, in the way that I grew up, there were things that I observed that my mama did as a single woman that were not particularly good for her, but she didn't know it because she was lonely. Okay? And... I remember understanding what a generational curse is like. And so without putting all of my mom's business out there, there are spirits that linger around families, adultery, drugs, alcohol, drug addiction, alcoholism, sexual perversion, um, obesity. The, these, are, these are curses that can linger around, not saying that you have to do it and whether you believe it or not, that's up to you. But I know I had to deal with it. And so the thing that my mom did not get rid of in her lifetime, I don't know if it touched my other sisters, but I know it came knocking at my door. And when it came knocking at my door, I had to go on a fast. I didn't know any other way to deal with it. That spirit was adultery. I was married. And, and I, I have it on pause with God for preparation. I think it's number either 37. I think it is 37. But, I, and I share my testimony with that. See, you think that the things that you may be struggling with are some alien thing. No, they may be very familiar to your family. And that's called a familiar spirit. If your older relatives are still alive, ask them, what did you struggle with? I don't know how I'm getting over there, but I'm going to get over there right quick so that we can finish this thing. Diabetes or anything that you're struggling with. But when, when that, that spirit of adultery came knocking at my door, I did like it. I wanted to engage. But the spirit of God, and the only way I can describe it, he came and he grabbed me by my collar and he pulled me back. He said, how dare you after what I've done for you? Now, this was, this was before I was diagnosed with cancer, years before, many, many years before. But when he pulled me, I felt it. I was actually in the church. It was somebody in church, y'all. And so he just pulled me back. He said, no. And he said, no, you need to go on a fast. And my friends didn't even know why I was so thin. 
But at the time, I was so thin because I was fighting for my life. Now, with this that came up, somebody asked me, there are only 20, somebody told me this week, it's only 24 hours in a day. Why are you so busy? And I told them, not no, and I just told them, I said, because I haven't accomplished what I want to accomplish in my life. And so, of course, me not knowing the root cause, we talked about that earlier this week, I went to my dad because he knows everything, he sees everything, he knows the why we do what we do. And so I asked him, I said, why am I doing this? And I'm going to tell y'all something. It, it, it's no, because that spirit still wants to come and knock on my door. It is so that I keep myself occupied with purpose, with destiny, so that I won't waste my time looking for love in all the wrong places. I'm going to put it that way. You see, I'm very transparent because somebody is struggling with a lot of stuff and you don't know how to get free. I'm telling you how to get free. Shut your mess down and go and sit in God's presence. Shut your mess down and go on a fast, a total fast with water for three days. Shut you down because you're out of control and you're about to derail your own life because you think you know God. You think because you're going to church and you work in ministry and you do all of these things that the enemy not going to attack you, you are lying to yourself. Yeah, 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 here I go. I said it. You're lying to yourself. This is all a part of having your soul prospering, your health prospering. I would that you would prosper and be in health as your soul is prospering. How are you prospering in your soul? If the only thing you're concerned about is how much money you have in your bank account, but your, the rest of your life is raggedy. You don't have a good relationship. You don't even have a partner in your life, a companion that you can grow old with. Because having a companion in your life does not necessarily mean sex all the time. Companionship is holding somebody's hand while you're watching TV. It's all of those things. Companionship is just having somebody to talk things over. What are you doing? What are you doing? I don't know how I got over there, but God took me over there because there are things that we can be free from and you can reverse type two diabetes. You can reverse all of these addictive behaviors. You can reverse and get away from all of these generational curses. The Bible says that I gave you power. He said, I've given you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. What you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and what you loose shall be loosed in heaven. So are you binding these spirits that want to just kind of come around you because they can't possess you because you're a believer. Two spirits can't house in one vessel. So if the spirit of God is in you, then certainly you cannot be possessed by any other spirit, but you can be attacked. You can be oppressed right here. That's why the word says, I would that you would prosper right here in your soul so that help, you can be healthy in all the other places. I'm sharing with you my heart. I'm sharing with you my journey with God, but I'm also sharing with you my juice journey so that you can be a whole person so that God can use your life. God can use your life. And I know that those of you all that are watching, I love you for it and I appreciate you for it. But I'm telling you, somebody is hurting out there today and I have to follow God. We're gonna juice. But I'm gonna tell you some things that can help you reverse um, your diabetes. A low calorie diet. Now don't use those artificial sweeteners because then those artificial sweeteners are, the man can't put nothing on me. Artificial sweeteners are the thing that they're putting on us that cause cancer cells to grow. Mm. So you still have to do research, low calorie. You do research on what a low calorie diet is. Exercise, fasting. Sitting, um, one of the things that I, I saw, some of the things that we do um, that I saw um, that can cause us to put weight gain on and cause these diseases to come on. Some, a lot of people are working from home now. You need to, on your lunch break or whenever, get up early and go for a walk and talk to God while you're walking. Do whatever you got to do. Get a stationary bike if you are confined to your house. Whatever you need to do to get your blood circulating, to get that weight off of you, to get that inflammation out of your body. I'm going to stop right there because I've gone over. I just want us to be well. I just want us to be healthy. 
I want us to have the blessing of the Lord that he intended for us to have while we're in the earth. We can't blame God for it. We cannot. We just are not spending enough time with him for him to tell us what we need to do. So again, the juice that I'm doing today is peaches. I have five peaches. I have one pineapple and I have two containers of raspberries. Okay. Now, uh, seven reasons raspberries are so good for you. Now, I, when I was going through cancer, we had a journey together. Um, when I went through that, I found out one of the most powerful super fruits that there is in the world is two of them, soursop fruit and raspberries. But on that list between the two, raspberries is the number one most powerful fruit in the world, the number one, the number one. Can I say that again? The number one, the number one. Let's, let's listen to this. The powerful health benefits of raspberries just might surprise you. One, one portion of raspberries provides 23 milligrams of vitamin C. That means that it's the, it's 30% of the daily target for vitamin C for women. According to um, this report, vitamin C supports immunity and skin health. Come on, y'all. That sagging skin for us women, that when we start to lose weight, listen, when we start to lose the weight because we're juicing, it will just tone our bodies up along with exercise now, okay? Um, vitamin C supports immunity and skin health and helps produce collagen. We're getting collagen shots. We're getting collagen powder when it's all right there for us. I'm going to keep going. The vitamin C in raspberries increases your body's fat burning ability. <laughs> Hallelujah. I didn't even know that. Produces the body's ability to burn fat. Oh, shucky ducky now. <laughs> raspberries contain manganese, calcium, and vitamin K, which play roles in bone health. Those of you who are dealing with osteoporosis, um, brittle bone disease, all of that, just every day, every day, get your raspberries. And, and what I would tell you to do, stock up on the raspberries when they're in season and put them in the freezer so that you can put them in a smoothie or eat frozen raspberries as your nighttime treat right before you go to bed. Ooh, I can feel that one right before you go to bed so that all of that fat burning properties can work on your body and work on your bones, all of those nutrients, when it's time for your body to um, send out the nutrients that you put in it at night. Mm, okay, I'm getting excited. They are low in sugar. Raspberries are also one of the lowest sugar fruits, lowest sugar. That means those of you with diabetes, gorge on raspberries, on raspberries. The low sugar content makes them an excellent option for anyone with a sweet tooth who wants to minimize their overall sugar intake, rich in anti-aging antioxidants. Listen, y'all, I might take some raspberries and make a, 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 what do you call that? A little mask for my skin. Just put it on the skin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Raspberries are antioxidant powerhouses with their high vitamin C content. Um, higher intakes of antioxidant-rich Fruits like raspberries are associated with a lower risk of chronic stress-related diseases. Listen at the diseases. Those diseases include cardiovascular diseases, cancer, and deaths from, they put it in here, all causes, raspberries. I'm telling y'all, I found out it's a little power pack, little fruit. Antioxidants may prevent or delay some of the cell damage. When you exercise, when you convert food into energy or are exposed to cigarette smoke, air pollution, and sunlight, your body naturally produces free radicals. So you got to do something about those free radicals. Now, you see that? You go out in the sun, you come back in, you sit for an hour, you allow the vitamin D to go in, and then you get your raspberry juice so that everything will be in balance. Here we go. Ah, they protect from cancer. They have what is called tannins or, uh, okay, a tannin, because I had to look up this stuff. Many classes of tannins have antioxidant properties, which have been found to lower total cholesterol. Look, 
this is a powerful little fruit right here. Lower blood pressure and stimulate the immune system. Come on, y'all. Those of you who have been on chemo, get you some raspberries. Come on, everybody. Let's do right with ourselves. This is a long one, but some of y'all are actually um, binge watching. Because I was told, I got a text yesterday. Somebody said, I sit and watch these all day. I want you to watch them, but I want you to do. Not just watch them. This is not entertainment. This is not what this is. This is health information to help you to feel better. Get up, get going, get moving. Life is waiting for you. It's a whole world out there. You know, I have conversations with my partner um, that's helping me. Miss Wanda, who was first, um, first on our Friends on Friday. And she's always right there in my ear telling me, be careful um, when we go out because we have, we've been asked to come and speak. Um, to a church about eating clean. I'm excited. But she told me some things and I told her, I said, Wanda, I love advice, but I have to, when God tells me something, I have to let people know this is what God told me. So when I first started my business over 20, well, 25 years ago this year, he said, I don't want you to worry about your competition. He said, do you not understand there are over 8 million people in the state of Virginia? He said, can you handle 8 million people right now? And I thought, wow, God, no. No, this was 25 years ago he told me that. He said, then stop worrying about what other people are doing. You focus on the space that you're in and let me promote you. So I want to leave that with y'all. Listen at this, though. Um, the tannins that are in food... They also have antibacterial properties that, among other things, they fight tooth decay. Now, how is it that a raspberry that has a little bit of sugar in it can fight tooth decay? Come on. we A lot of us are dealing with a lot of things. And if you have teeth problems, that means that that could go into your heart. I'm not touching that. Barley. These are things that have tannins or the things that help your body to fight off the sickness and disease. Berries. Chocolate. Legumes. Not sweet chocolate, y'all. Y'all can get the chocolate and mix it, you know, uh, unsweetened chocolate and put a little a little bit of maple syrup or a little bit of honey to sweeten it and put you some nuts in that and, and let it cool down and, and eat that at night. Nuts, pomegranates, rhubarb, squash, antho, anthocyanins possess anti-diabetic, anti, ooh, wait, 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 wait. Antho cyanins, which is the list of things that I just told you about, and especially raspberries, possess anti-diabetic, anti-cancer, anti-inflammatory, anti-microbial, and anti-obesity effects, as well as as well as prevention of cardiovascular diseases. Therefore. Anthocyanins extracted from edible plants are potential for pharmaceutical ingredients. So if the pharmaceutical companies that do right by us, why can't you just eat those fruits and vegetables and extract them yourself? Let your body extract them. Why can't you do that? Raspberries are high in fiber, among the highest whole food sources of dietary fiber. Raspberries Con contributes to fullness, Blunts blood sugar by slowing digestion supports. Raspberries fiber also helps beneficial gut bacteria flourish. Come on, y'all. It sharpens your brain memory. Raspberries help counter oxidative stress and imbalance between cell damaging free radicals and the body's ability to fight off their harmful effects. Oxidative stress is a risk factor in diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's raspberries guys so for those of you who are concerned about your memory and you keep confessing that you don't remember number one stop confessing it and and say what god says about you that nothing the world can't put nothing on you stop listening to all of these reports that are negative to you and you know that your mind is too weak to handle it then tell yourself my memory is strong and i'm going to eat raspberries to make sure that I get rid of this oxidative stress that's come in to hurt me. 
we're going to juice. Don't forget to go to the description box, to the link, and get your juicer. But it's one more thing I want to tell you in the description box because mine came. So, when I told you to order the Brazil nuts because the Brazil nuts help your lymph system, this is what the bag looks like. And you get 50, because I ordered two, you get 50 little packets. So this is something that you could munch on in the evenings or after your fast. If you're still hungry after the fast, it's going to fill you up. But those raspberries will too. So look at that. Now you have a snack with your Brazil nuts and your raspberries. So God, let's, mm. so guys, let's make this juice because I'm already in 45 minutes. But I know that the information that I'm giving you, I know it's informative because it's the information that I got. And it certainly helped me to live the life that I'm living right now. And I'm so glad. I'm so glad to be alive, y'all. I want to tell y'all. Because I asked God, I said, why did, you, why did you preserve my life? So I belong to him. I don't belong to myself. I'm his. He my daddy. He my ride or die. That's my buddy. That's my best friend. I can talk to him about any and everything. Because when Darlin died, he said, it's me and you now. It's me and you now. Yeah. juicer sometimes I don't have it tight and I have juice coming down so I'm losing some of my juice this morning but I'm not going to keep the juicer on while I put the raspberries in I'm just going to put all of them and I have rinsed them off but I'm just going to go ahead and put all of these in before I turn the juicer on and it's making right now I think I'm at I don't know how many ounces I'll let y'all know Two packets of raspberries, five peaches, and one pineapple. I think I should have used two pineapples to give me a little bit more juice. But we're going to go ahead and turn the juice on. the raspberries last I know that it's in the base of the container so when I clean it I can drink that too but I want to show y'all man the smell of it is like a beautiful perfume a perfume it's still coming out pink because the antioxidants the skin my 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 that smells yum delicious mm. I can't wait to get responses from my little kids that's watching I'm pouring it in my glass and we're gonna taste this and then I'm gonna let y'all go because I'm actually over my time and late for work. I didn't even look at the clock. But anyway, it is wonderful because what I'm working towards is doing this as opposed to going to work. But I just do these all day. So I'm working really hard to retire and just do juicing episodes and travel and encourage other people to take care of themselves. Here we go. It's one of them kind of juices, y'all. It's one of them kind. The bitterness of the raspberries, the, the, the flavor of the raspberries, it's just such a good taste. I just can't tell y'all how good this one is. I love you guys. I know I went a long time today, 
But you know what, guys? Take care of your health. Take care of yourself. Don't lie to yourself, whatever you do. Don't pretend like you don't know that there are things that are coming and knocking at your life and oppressing you. And you're like, what in the world? Why do I have to, why am I dealing with this? Go and talk to God about it and he'll show you how to overcome it. But again, he wants you to prosper and be in good health as your soul prospers. God bless you all. Enjoy your raspberry peach pineapple juice today. Bye, everybody.